Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, August 17th. Okay, so we have the moon in Capricorn energy going void, of course, at 4.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Aquarius energy at 5.46 p.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. So that's going to put us in the full moon energy window. Of course, we're building towards the full moon in Aquarius taking place at 27 degrees here on the 19th. So the minute that the moon starts moving into this Aquarius energy, we're going to start kind of tapping into a new level of awareness, new level of consciousness. We're going to, again, emotionally detach in order for us to act as the observer, to see the greater, grander picture and the greater, grander potential. So let's just talk about the fact that the transition from the moon in Capricorn energy to Aquarius energy is always a welcomed one. Why? Well, because in the Capricorn energy, first of all, we're kind of serious. We're semi somber, if you will. We're focused on our to do list. We're focused on our roles, our responsibility. Basically, we need to get shit done. But under that influence, we also start realizing where it is that there's some obstacles, some challenges that we're facing. We're realizing where it is that restrictions are holding us back. And of course, that doesn't feel so good. The Aquarius energy, however, allows us to start problem solving, to again, emotionally detach from the situation, to act as our higher selves, the observer self, if you will. We're able to see all the cogs in the wheel. We're able to see all the options, all the opportunities that we weren't able to see when we were tunnel vision in that Capricorn energy. And of course, because we are building towards a full moon in Aquarius, the energy is going to become a little bit more rapid, a little bit more potent, a little bit more intense. There are going to be triggers and activations in order for us to put things into perspective. The full moon, of course, is a full illumination of hidden information, of details, of perspectives that we haven't been able to align with as of yet. And of course, that full moon needs to trigger an emotional reaction in order for us to release, to purge the old emotions, the old ways of thinking, the old ways of doing. And so again, we're just scratching the surface here today, because again, late in the day, we're shifting into this Aquarius energy, but we're definitely going to feel a little bit lighter, a little bit of a brighter mood and attitude, again, breaking away from that seriousness, that somberness that the moon in Capricorn always brings. So with that being said, we have 14 different aspects taking place here today, which is a relatively busy day in the cosmos. But again, dating back to Wednesday, the energy has been picking up ever so slightly each and every single day. The amount of aspects that have been popping off in the cosmos as of late have been increasing because there's going to be a major epiphany a major aha moment coming at us under this full moon in Aquarius. And so again, we're kind of building in intensity. We're building in energies. It is going to feel very manic, very chaotic, if you will, until we reach that pivot point at that 27 degree of Aquarius. And of course, that is when full circle understandings, full circle perspectives, some hidden details, some information definitely coming out of the woodwork. And we're going to start making a sense of a lot of things that we've been very confused about. With all of that being said, out of these 14 different aspects taking place here today, 13 of them are going to involve the moon. That's a little bit cray cray, especially seeing as the only aspect that isn't involving the moon is an intensity all in itself. It's between Venus and Pluto. And of course, we'll talk about that when we get to it. But let's kick off the day with the moon in this Capricorn energy, making a positive interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who is currently retrograde. Again, looking back, reflecting, revisiting, re, let's call it processing old situations, old matters of the heart. Okay, so the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space and they're on the same page. They're working together. What we are doing is we're gaining insight in the long term, looking back in this present moment, because again, we're looking back through a different lens. We're starting to kind of piece things together here. 
that changes the present moment, it also changes our long-term goals, visions, and dreams, especially where happiness is concerned, passion, desire is concerned, overall heart activations are concerned. The Leo energy matters of the heart. So again, we're piecing things together here and it's giving us a greater, grander view. Again, looking back, changing this present moment and allowing us to see a greater, grander perspective of the options, the opportunities that we now have to move on, to move forward. The moon in Capricorn then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, basically the accumulative wisdom that we have accumulated through the tough love life lessons. And of course, Jupiter is in Gemini energy. The Gemini energy has us back and forth, tug of war, on the fence. We are tapping into positive insights and then we speak negativity and fears into it. We are pushing the boundaries of our mental plane, but that negative ass narrative keeps pulling us on back. So this is a positive interaction. This means that we are sitting in a good mood, a good attitude. We are very optimistic, very confident for the things to come. Again, the moon in Capricorn, long-term goals, ambitions, visions, and dreams. Jupiter offering us the opportunity to kind of break away from the old, start something new. Again, pushing the boundaries of our thoughts, of our opinions, of our perspectives. And now we're opening ourselves up to some possibilities that we wouldn't even have considered this time last week. Now, just as things get good, just as things are kind of rolling in the right way, the right direction, we have to have that dark force egoic programming kicking in, taking us back a couple of steps. The moon in Capricorn energy is going to get into the boxing ring, fight it out with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is retrograde in Aries energy. So just a reminder, Chiron retrograde in this Aries energy is allowing us to be the spiritual warrior within ourselves to take a good look at our mental health, at our emotional health, our spiritual health, our physical health, identify the problems, identify the issues, identify the hangups, and actually do something about it. Tackle it head on. We're not sweeping things under the rug anymore. We understand that we have to do the healing work as it comes up in order for us to be free and clear in our futuristic vision and our futuristic selves so that the past doesn't come back to bite us in the ass just when things start going good. And so Chiron has been helping us with this new version of self. Again, we just anchored it in, still semi unfamiliar to us. The parameters, the boundaries are still kind of vague. The moon getting into the boxing ring with Chiron is going to bring up all these fears, all these doubts, all of these old ass negative Nancy thoughts, ideas, and opinions. We're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so good. We're not feeling so confident after we just had that boost of self-esteem, after we just had a little bit of a more positive perspective that we were choosing for ourselves suddenly everything falls to shit. This is what happens with a square because it creates conflict and tension because we're going through some growing pains. And the growing pains that we're going through is looking at ourselves, looking at our positives, at our negatives, at our, I'm gonna say, ability to heal said wounds, especially when it comes to our mental plane. We're not gonna sit in that funk for very long. The moon and Capricorn going to make a positive interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in Gemini energy. Again, we are, technically speaking, we are wishing that we could take action and make moves. We are wishing that we could like exert all of our physical energy through the physical form and actually make some progress. But in Gemini energy, this is about the, let's call it energy management of our physical form, understanding that, yeah, we may want to take action and act on impulse. But what we're supposed to be doing right now is getting a well-calculated, well-strategized plan together in our mental plane. That's a Gemini energy. So we're supposed to be channeling it into intellectual type of, let's call it situations and circumstances. We're supposed to be thinking very aggressively about the path, about the direction, about, you know, the goals, the vision, the dreams that we want to take and sitting in that so that we can cultivate, build up this energy, this fire, this spark, this flame 
so that when we are gifted with the green light, go ahead to take action and make moves, we already have a plan and a strategy for us to follow, for us to execute upon. So the moon and Capricorn interacting with Mars in this Gemini energy, first of all, is building a new sense of determination, okay? We are hell bent damn well and determined. We are setting our sights on something. We are planning it out accurately according to our energy and or according to basically our resources and our energy that we have available to us right now. We're planning things out, but we are, again, cultivating the fire, the the spark, the flame that is needed in order to push through the first set of challenges that we know we're going to face the minute that we take action, the minute that we make moves. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who's in this Virgo energy, is going to be making an awkward interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. So this is the one aspect that I spoke about that does not involve the moon here today, and it does carry its own intensity. First of all, any planet interacting with Pluto, there's going to be a certain level of intensity because that's what he does. He turns the volume all the way up on our thoughts, on our feelings, especially the not so nice ones, especially the ones, you know, fears, doubts, and insecurities in order for us to be illuminated to the old programming. We have this power struggle going on within us. Pluto retrograde in this Aquarius energy is helping us to identify the power struggle going on within us. Again, old version of self versus new version of self, ego programming versus higher self programming. We want to do better. We want to improve, but we have to identify the problem in order to actually fix it. We love Virgo energy and Pluto energy interacting with each other. Of course, Venus in this Virgo energy, yeah, she's trying to dissect matters of the heart, but she's doing it with a matter of fact, nitty gritty approach because the Virgo energy doesn't really, I'm not going to say we don't care about feelings, but we want to deal with the matter of fact. We want to deal with the truth. We want to deal with what is instead of what we wished it could be or we wished it once was. And so the Virgo energy and the Plutonian energy does a great deal to help us make things a little bit clear. Yes, through a certain term of intensity. The Virgo energy, of course, kind of has more of an impact on our lower level intellect where our mental plane is concerned. Pluto, on the other hand, has a major impact on our psyche, on the programming, on the conditioning. So what we're doing is, is we're dissecting old relationship dynamics. What we're doing is, is we're feeling pretty intense about some of the relationship dynamics that we're currently in or we're currently in because again we're in a retrograde we're looking back we're trying to pick things apart to understand a little bit better uh you know what happened how did we end up here why did why did this particular energy exchange this soul contract have to take place right now in order to teach us something but of course this isn't a good interaction there's a lot of intensity here so this is going to trigger a lot of not so nice thoughts, a lot of not so nice feelings. Um, we could find ourselves in a little bit of a jealous situation for no reasons, especially with people that we have no want, need or desire to be jealous of or jealous towards. We could be triggering and activating a certain level of possessiveness within us, which of course that in itself just screams that there's a lot of fears, doubts and insecurities of quote unquote losing th something or someone. There's a lot of darkness, a lot of power, a lot of control that we've given other people. And this particular interaction is going to bring light to that. We can kind of look at our current cir circumstances and situations and understand where it is that the energy exchange is not fair. Or we could be looking back at relationships gone by and understand where it is that we gave our power away, where it is that we're, there was a certain level of manipulation either on our part towards other people or from other people towards us. Either way, it is supposed to be highlighting the not so nice thoughts and feelings. We're definitely going to realize that. And it's also going to put us in a little bit of a conflict, a little bit of tension within ourselves to understand where it is that we're still holding on and trying to beat a dead horse, so to speak. And again, just a figure of speech, right? I don't promote it. Anywho, 
there is this whole, let's call it aha moment out of the darkness, out of the funk that will put us onto where it is that we have some wants, needs, and desires within us that we haven't even acknowledged within ourselves. They've been so buried, so deep and dark down in the darkest crevices within us that we have essentially been operating out of an egoic programming, looking externally for other people to fill the wounds, to fill the voids within us when we didn't even know that we have them within ourselves. So how are we supposed to essentially find someone that meets our wants, needs, and desires when we can't even identify them within ourselves? This is going to help us put things in perspective. This is going to help us shift our heart space, shift our mind space, into where it is that we could do better, where it is that we could be healthier, happier, where it is that we can improve, where it is that maybe we need to refine the checklist, if you will, of the people that we are choosing to have energetic relationships with so that we can essentially boss up within ourselves to realize where it is that we were playing small, where it is that we were settling for certain qualities and characteristics that of course we're doing nothing for us for our boy for the wounds within us because we didn't even know that we were trying to fulfill them this is going to put us on a path to realize that our wants needs and desires for relationships for the people in our lives are changing that in itself is going to set the tone for the aha moments the epiphanies that we are about to have from now until the full moon here on the 19th that is going to have us pivoting changing the game if you will on how we are choosing the people in our lives and how we are choosing to interact with said people. Okay, so that is a very intense type of energy. That is the only interaction that doesn't involve the moon. Let's return to normal moon programming. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with the sun. The sun, of course, shining a bright light in this Leo energy, trying to get us into the heart and soul of the matter, trying to make us operate from our most authentic selves to identify our wants, our needs, our desires. Now, the friction here, and again, anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together in any kind of interaction, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be an emotional awareness of new wants, needs, and desires, but this is a tough one. This is going to emerge out of the tension, out of the conflict. We have the moon and Capricorn trying to anchor us in this present moment, trying to have us kind of, you know, tie up the loose ends of the past, emotionally speaking, if you will. The sun, on the other hand, wants us to be focusing in on the future. And Capricorn energy has some very strong wants, needs, and desires for our long-term goals, but we don't permit ourselves to go that far into the future when there's still so much in the present moment that needs to be wrapped up, that needs to have a finality, that needs to have a closure. And so there is this tug of war because one, we want to take action, we want to make moves, we want to move on to pursue new happiness, new goals, new dreams. But the moon in Capricorn is like, okay, listen, we got to get the, the rough parts out of the way. We have to do the tasks, do the chores. We have to do what we have to do to clear out this gunk so that we can fully invest in building a new path, in initiating something new that, of course, our heart and soul wants us to do, wants us to pursue. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. And that, of course, is trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us thinking about the future, trying to show us where it is that we could be making some progress. So although we are addressing the fragmented past issues, the topics and themes that still need finality, that still need closure, we are also trying to basically refine the goal, the vision, the dream that we're trying to make our way towards. This is going to, again, put us in a better mood, a better attitude to see where it is that we have the opportunity in the present moment, even if it's a small baby step, even if it's just an inclination of making a choice or a decision, we are starting to, again, refine where it is that we want to go from here. Yes, we're addressing the concerns from the past, but we are slowly but surely trying to paint the picture of where it is that we would like to see some progress in a new path, in a new direction. 
The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is in Taurus energy. This is earth on earth action. This is what gives us our trine and a whole lot of insight is coming in in this moment. We are having aha moments. We are having epiphanies, especially for our long term goals, our long term visions and dreams. But because the Taurus energy that Uranus is in is about this present moment, about our physical realms in the here and now, this is going to be an aha moment, some insight, some clarity on what we have power and control over even in the smallest of details in our day to day lives in this present moment in the here and now that could help us align with the futuristic goals, visions and dreams. The moon is then going to make a very harsh interaction with Mercury. So we started the day off with the moon and Mercury on the same page. They were in the same kind of vibe, if you will. Now, nope, we are on opposite sides of the spectrum. Why is that, you may ask? Well, first of all, the moon in Capricorn has a sense of responsibility, a sense of duty, if you will, to wrap up the chapters of the past, especially karmically speaking. Emotionally, we need to kind of cleanse, we need to purge, we need to leave it in the past, especially when there are new matters of the heart that have us excited, that have us inspired for what could be or what could become. The mercurial energy, although retrograde, has us reflecting back on matters of the heart, but we are starting to figure out what we now want for ourselves because of what we no longer want when looking back on what it is that we just came out of. The moon in this Capricorn energy fixated on wrapping things up. Mercury, on the other hand, excited to begin again. Thus the confusion, thus the detachment, thus the separation. The moon, then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, retrograde in Pisces energy, helping us to deal with life as it is, not for the way that we wished it would be. This tells me that the moon is at the final degrees of this Capricorn energy because, of course, Neptune is at the final degrees of the Pisces energy. So this is going to be a positive interaction, which helps renew, refresh, restore our soul and our spirit, especially reminding us what all of this healing work is for. What is that, you may ask? Well, it's for us to actually be able to enjoy life again. It's The healing journey is not for us to be able to deal with our pain and trauma. It is to free us of the pain and trauma so that we can actually enjoy life. We can actually enjoy what we're building towards. And so again, thinking long term, thinking about new goals, new wants, new needs, new desires. This is like the pep in our step that we've been missing. This is again, just a reminder from our higher selves that the short term struggle, the short term sacrifice is going to be worth it for all of the long-term gains. It is at this point, 4.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon goes void, of course. Things are shaky, things are unstable, things are uncertain when the moon is void. Lucky for us, it's only about an hour. And then at 5.46 p.m., we shift into that Aquarius energy. You will feel it 100%. 6 14 p.m we have the very first interaction and it's the moon now in aquarius energy coming up to bumping into teaming up with conjuncting pluto why because pluto is retrograde at this zero degree of aquarius energy and so again a conjunction is a reset there's just as much of an ending as there is a beginning emotionally speaking we are detached we're not heavy and weighted like we were in this Capricorn energy. We were almost so into the struggle, so into the limitations, so into the challenges and blockages that we weren't seeing the forest past the trees. Suddenly, we're in a drone now. We're flying up over the forest. Now we can't even identify one singular tree because we see the amalgamation of those singular trees in the grouping of the forest that now doesn't even look like a forest from up above. Again, acting as the observer. Now we're looking down on ourselves. We're able to see things from a totally different perspective, a totally different lens. Yes, there's an intensity. There has to be 
with an interaction with Pluto. But the ending is that we're putting the heaviness, especially with the karmic weight from the karmic chapters that we're just closing behind us. The beginning is that now we're seeing our ability to grow, to heal, to transform, to boss up, to improve, to be better, especially emotionally speaking, where now we're starting to see some solutions to some of the problems that we were too close to over the last couple of days with that moon in Capricorn energy. The moon is then going to make an interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. So we kind of love the Aquarius energy and the Virgo energy that Venus is in working together because again, the Virgo energy dissects things to the smallest of details, especially where our perspective is concerned. Again, lower level intellect while the Aquarius energy is the highest form of our intellect. So there is a new level of awareness that we are now taking a good look at relationship dynamics, at our wants, needs, and desires, at what our heart wants us to do, at what our heart wants us to pursue. And again, there's not a whole lot of emotion going on. We're very analytical. We're very much looking through the lens of here's the matter of fact. Here's what didn't work for us in the past. Here's what I would like to try now. Here's what I would like to see in the future. It is very, very intellectualized. The moon is then going to make a awkward interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in Gemini energy. So now, now we're going to start debating, okay? The Gemini energy is represented by the twins. There is a conflict. There is a back and forth. There are pros and cons to weigh, especially with the option, with the opportunities that we currently have available to us to move on, to grow, to heal. Now, again, emotionally speaking, we're given a free pass by, again, emotionally detaching from the situation, examining it as a third party observer. Emotionally speaking, if this was a super positive interaction, we'd be hyped up. We'd be optimistic. We would be confident. We would just be buzzing with excitement and inspiration. But again, this isn't a negative interaction, but it's an awkward one. So now we're stepping back and we're analyzing. We're taking a good look at the options, at the opportunities to grow, to heal, to move on. And now we're picking it apart. We're picking it to death. There's a lot of indecision. There's a lot of second guessing. There's a lot of cha 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 between our heart and between our head. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Aquarius energy, semi-squaring, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Saturn. So Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles, responsibility, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and he's retrograde. Again, internalized energy in Pisces, looking at where it is that we need better boundaries, where it is that we need to close the door on some old ways of doing things, some old ways of feeling, the old ways of believing. Now, Saturn is the old traditional ruler over the Aquarius energy, so there is an intensity here. A semi-square is going to highlight where it is that we're not on the same page. Emotionally speaking, the Aquarius energy has us operating from our intellect, while the Pisces energy that Saturn is in has us operating from our higher selves, from our intuition. Here's the thing. We can see the greater, grander picture of where it is that we're coming from. We understand the belief system that we were kind of aligned with at the time. We understood the goals, the visions that we that, and dreams that we had from that limited belief system. And we all also can see how that created the results that we were disappointed with, that we were unhappy with, that we're now trying to put behind us. So in relation to realizing what we no longer want, what we no longer need, what we no longer desire to experience, we can use that framework and create a better one, one of improvement, one of health, one of happiness, one of betterment. We can right the wrongs of the past in our present moment, shift our perspective, shift our belief system, shift our, let's call it higher self heart space into what we want, need and desire and understand that that is going to require a different course of action. Mm -hmm.